And this is something we've been talking about for the longest time. We've really wanted to do this. So today for me marks exactly two years since I moved here to Thailand. Or technically two years since I got out of quarantine. God, remember that bullshit? Great to be out and about today. I have been sick as a dog. I got food poisoning a couple of days ago and I've had it before. I've had food poisoning, but never like this. It was super gnarly. I was so unwell. I basically didn't leave my condo for two days and I've just been resting and trying to get better. And this morning I woke up and I'm feeling amazing today. And I'm just, I've got all this pent up energy from being cooped up in the condo for two days. So if I think back over the last two years of the adventures I've had, the places I've been and the people I've met, I just think, man, what a ride it's been. As I look back over the last two years, I can say with confidence that these have been the best two years of my life. I've just had nothing but fun and adventure. My biggest takeaway from this is it's all been really smooth sailing. I haven't had any serious challenges. I haven't had to face any adversity. There's nothing really that difficult or challenging about what I do. I think, you know, the only real uh, difficult part and it's not even difficult is having to deal with like troll comments or whatever. And for me, that doesn't even bother me the slightest. You see, the worst thing that a hater can do is to confirm any self-doubt that you may have. See, hate comments have never really bothered me. I knew going in, I looked at my favorite YouTubers and the comments that they would get and the troll messages and hate comments. And I thought, God, if these amazing creators are getting this, then I better buckle up. You see, the only ones that can really get to you are things like at the beginning, if people say something to you like, this guy is never gonna make it on YouTube. Those ones stick with you a little longer because you may have that, that insecurity yourself. But once you reach a certain point, you realize all these people are wrong and the things they're saying, they're just directed to upset you and to, to try and bring you down. And they honestly just end up rolling off you like water off a duck's back. Now I've heard everything you could possibly hear. <laughs> I've blocked over 600 people, but given that my channel has got 12 and a half million views at this point, you know, that's actually a very small percentage of people that have viewed to people that want to talk shit. And that's fine. You know, that's all part of what comes along with it. And the troll comments kind of develop over time. You know, at the beginning, people will make fun of you saying that you're not making much money or that you're broke, you're poor or whatever. But there comes a point in time where that's no longer a relevant thing to say. Then people seem to like attack your age or whatever, which doesn't bother me the slightest because most people my age are probably at work right now and I'm here doing this. So that doesn't upset me at all. There is one though that has remained consistent throughout and that's that I'm like some kind of trust fund baby or I'm living and traveling on my mom and dad's credit card or something ridiculous like this and anyone that knows me or has been following along the journey knows that that's not the case at all. You see when I moved here to Thailand I came here with the sole purpose of making it on YouTube and I honestly came with not that much you know I had enough money to last me about a year I thought living on quite a very basic lifestyle. So my first apartment I rented was like 7,000 baht a month. I used to eat a lot of street food and cheap local Thai places. I mean, I still do, but not out of necessity anymore, but just because I enjoy them. But to get to that position, I had worked very hard in the past. You know, I've talked about this in many other episodes, but I've owned a business from when I was 18 years old. I worked in restaurants, bars, hotels, up to a management level. I was earning quite good money before I left Australia back in 2017. And at that point, I'd managed to save up quite a bit of money to be able to go travel the world. And now here we are two years later, I'm earning great money and I'm in this amazing condo that I got at a really good price way back during all the lockdowns and everything. And my landlords have been super cool and they haven't put the price up that much since then. And this place I've got for another six months and I've already, we're already in talks of renewing for another year. So it looks like I'm going to be staying here at least another year and a half because I love it here. And, and honestly, this is my home now. So what does the future hold? Well, I'm actually working on a couple of really cool projects at the moment. And 
today I'm going to go do a little bit of research for one of them, so I thought I'd bring you along with me and tell you all about it. So right now I have come to Tong Lo to check out a co-working space that's going to be perfect for this project, hopefully. If it is as good as they say it is and as good as it's advertised online, hopefully they'll let me take the camera in and do a bit of filming inside. So I am really excited to announce that Dan and I are going to be starting a podcast together and this is something we've been talking about for the longest time. We've really wanted to do this and we're actually going to fund the entire thing ourselves. We're going to rent a studio space, buy all the equipment needed and get everything set up ourselves. But recently I've discovered a couple of places in the city where you can actually rent a podcast studio space. So we're going to do that to start off. We're going to try out by renting a studio space see how it goes and see if it is successful and if it is successful then we'll look at getting our own space we would love a space not just for shooting podcasts but also that we could you know create sets there and shoot our regular videos and just basically a creative space that we could go to So the concept for this podcast will be we're looking to shoot about one to two episodes per week and one episode will be me and Dan hanging out and chatting about what's going on in Thailand each week. You know, we'll touch on some of the news and the events that are happening and give our take on things and things that we're noticing in Thailand. And then the second episode, we're looking to do interviews with people. There's so many fascinating people over the last two years I've met some incredible people with amazing stories so would love to sit down with some of these people and hear some of the stories and as I read these stories that are coming through in my ebook which is very very nearly finished by the way I want to meet some of these people as well and get them down you know I've read these stories and I think I could talk to this person for an hour about this story so this is what we're hoping to do and I'm so excited to start all of this. But unfortunately today the studio that I went to go visit to see if we could shoot there, it was in use. Today's a weekend, I didn't realize today was a Saturday. That's one benefit of doing what I do, I never really know what day it is but being that today's a Saturday it's busy it was booked out for the day so I have booked a time in to go check out the studio I can't wait to see it and I'll keep you updated on how this is all looking one last thing thank you so much to everyone that's been following along the journey for the last two years it's been a hell of a ride and I'm so excited for the future I'm, I'm, I'm